Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome back to the fish room. In my last video, we took a closer look at my largest fish tank, my 880 gallon aquarium. Today I'm going to give you guys a similar video on my second largest aquarium, my 350 gallon tank. Most of the fish in this aquarium originate from Central America. There are a few exceptions, but the majority of these fish come from Central America. I chose fish from that region because they're known to be very beautiful, very smart, but at the same time very aggressive. And that's definitely true with all the fish in this tank. And it makes it one of my most entertaining aquariums. There's always something new going on. These fish have their own agendas, they have their own goals, and it's just very entertaining. And there's never a dry moment with this aquarium. So yeah, today I will give you guys a detailed update on this aquarium. Give you guys a look at all the fish, talk about their personality and their behavior, and just give you guys an idea of what it's like to have this aquarium. So I want to start off by giving you guys a quick look at my aquascape. With all my aquascapes, I try to make the tank look as natural as possible. So here we have what I would say is a replica of a Central American waterway. Um, I have rocks and driftwood that I collected from nearby streams and rivers. And when you collect your decorations locally from the wild, you can never go wrong. It just automatically makes the tank look amazing. Um, the one thing that this tank doesn't have is a substrate. I started off with a substrate. You can see I still have a little bit to the left. But this tank has been set up for maybe about five years now. And week after week, me doing water changes, siphoning up the gravel. I siphon a little bit up each water change to the point where we don't have any left. Now, I would have replaced it a long time ago. However, I find that this beer bottom aquarium is just much easier to maintain. Um, of course, there's not a lot of poop hiding underneath the substrate. And then two, if I was to put a substrate in this aquarium, these fish, they like to dig, and they're most likely going to push the substrate to this left side of the tank anyway. And I'm not sure if I want half of my tank to have a substrate and half of it to be beer bottom. So I'm just letting the tank empty out. Um, like I said, there are benefits when it comes to just having a bare bottom, but it does take away from my aquascape. But altogether, I rate my aquascape a 7 out of 10. Um, definitely looks good. Could look better, but I give it a 7 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think about my aquascape in the comment section below. But yeah, after that, we have the fish. Now, like I said, most of the fish come from Central America. There are a few exceptions, so let me point out some of those exceptions. Um, we have my catfish. In the back, you can see my big eye African catfish, one of the oldest fish that I have. Um, that fish is about maybe seven years, no, seven inches long, possibly 10 years old. I picked him up when he was like three inches, so he must have been alive for at least a year before I picked him up. So he's probably about 11 years old and he's in here um, just because he's a great bottom feeder and he really can't survive in my South American aquarium or my African tank. I don't really have an African tank, but he can't really survive in any of my other aquariums, so that's the reason why he's in his tank. Same thing with my Raphael catfish. You can see him in those rocks. Just about the same age. I did pick him up when he was much younger, so he was about maybe an inch when I bought him. So he doesn't really have too much of a life before me, but um, he has to be about 10, 10 to 11 years old as well. And those two are from, the big eye catfish is from Africa, the Raphael is from South America. And then we have plecos in this aquarium. We have two bristles plecos, one albino, one chocolate. Um, right now, they're not in sight, but they're making their presence known because the algae in this aquarium is in control. I think the last video I gave you guys of this tank, this whole left panel was covered in green algae and it's gone. The, the substrate every now and then gets covered in brown algae and they just clean it up with no problem. Bristles plecos are definitely the best plecos you could get for your aquarium. They don't get too big, they get the job done, and that's the reason why I have them in this aquarium. They may come out throughout this video, so if I do see them, I'll point them out. But those are from South America. And then we have some sticklers that are from other regions. This guy is from South America. I'll talk about him a little bit later. But this big guy is from South America. That queen back there is from Madagascar. But everybody else is from Central America. So now I'm gonna give you guys a look at the fish, talk about all the fish, and well, we just talked about some of the fish, but the main fish, the focal fish, my Central American cichlids, these guys, they're the show of the aquarium. They create their hierarchy and there's just so much effort put into the hierarchy. Everything that these fish do is for the hierarchy. They all want to get a higher position in this society and it's just amazing to see how far they go. As I mentioned, everything that they do from eating to sleeping, the point, their, their choice of places to sleep and everything, everything is based on the hierarchy and I just find it to be so entertaining. So I want to give you guys a look at all these fish based on the hierarchy. I will say that I don't fully understand the hierarchy, it's a little bit complicated, but I'll try to give you guys as best of a breakdown of the ranks as possible. 
So starting off, we have the alpha fish of the aquarium, the top dog, my female Pierce eye cichlid, right there in the center. Beautiful fish, she has that nice golden coloration with that, just a two-tone, a very well-decorated fish. As I mentioned, these Central American cichlids are known for their beauty, and the queen of the tank definitely is a showstopper. So she's right here. I love her because she's a gentle giant. She's the biggest fish in the tank. Um, right now she is, I'd say, she's about 10, 10 inches long. She's about seven inches tall and she's about two and a half to three inches thick. She is the biggest fish in the tank. Not because she gets the biggest, just because I had her the longest. I had her about one year longer than I had all the other fish in this tank. So she has the size advantage. And that's the reason why she is the tank boss. But some of the males in this aquarium are catching up in size. Some of them will get bigger than her and eventually she, she will lose her crown. But um, as I mentioned, she's a gentle giant. She does a great job managing the fish in this aquarium as a tank boss. A tank boss is crucial in your aquarium. You need a fish that's not too aggressive, but at the same time, you need a fish that's gonna put other fish in their place. And she definitely doesn't look at, as we speak, she's trying to put the black belt in his place because he's her biggest competition. So she's definitely a great tank boss. Um, but yeah, she eventually will be outgrown by some of these other fish and she will lose her rank, but for now she's um, she's a beast and she loves to eat. One thing about this fish, she's always watching me. Fish in this community, most of the time they watch each other because it's a pretty rough aquarium. All these fish are aggressive, so they have to keep an eye on each other, but not the Pierce eye. She's always watching me no matter where I'm at in the fish room, she always has her eyes on me just because this girl loves to eat. And I definitely enjoy her. You can see she does have a split in her tail. That's not from this aquarium. She's the absolute queen in this tank. Nobody bothers her for the most part. She had that when she was in this aquarium. Um, she was attacked by my Orinoco, the guy right there on the top. He hates fish that are similar in color, shape, or size. And she's similar in color, so he attacked her. And that's the reason why she has that tail like that, but, but no injuries in this aquarium. And when you think about it, these fish are all very aggressive. Some of these fish are known to be some of the top, most aggressive fish with a fish. And for the most part, they all are in decent shape. They're showing decent color. Nobody is forced to hide, so it's a pretty balanced community. But yeah, she's the top tank boss at the moment. Um, she's getting a lot of challenges from this guy right here, who I'd say is the second ranking fish in the tank. And this is my black belt cichlid, a very beautiful fish. Obviously, he's called a black belt because he has that black marking in his side. He's about the same length as the pier side. He's just not as thick. The thickness comes with, so with time. Um, but he will outgrow her. Females, they're limited with their growth. She, I said, is about 10 inches. He's about 10 inches. He's probably going to grow to about 13, possibly 14 inches. So yeah, with the size, he will gain the crown of the aquarium. So far, I can't really tell what type of tank boss he'll be. Um, he does like to um, fight a lot, but that's probably because he is the second in command. Eventually, when he does reach top position, um, most likely he won't have to fight as much. But while he's still trying to prove himself, Throughout this video, you'll see him challenging up the fish. But he's a very beautiful fish. So he's the second ranking fish. After him, I'd say it's this guy right here. The the Ahab or Hodori. Not the most colorful fish, but definitely a very cool looking fish. I love his nuku hump coming in. He has that nice rounded head and he just looks like a tough fish. Now this guy challenges the black note a lot. Um, throughout the, in this video, you might see him going back and forth. He's the biggest competition for the black belt. He's afraid of the parasite, so he's not going for top position, but he definitely doesn't respect this black belt. Um, but like I said, I just love the shape of this guy. And if I was to choose a fish to take over as tank boss, it would be this guy, simply because he's just a tough looking fish. Look at him going back and forth with his biggest competition. But yeah, that's the dirt raking fish in his tank. After that, I believe it's my Meso Harris Fast Day. Now this, as I mentioned, is a South American cichlid. Eventually, I will be taking them out. I'm actually working on a project behind us. And on 125, I have some baby fest days looking for a female. But for now, he's in here. He's about maybe nine to 10 inches. And I want him out, one, because I want this tank to be fully Central American. And two, because this guy has the potential to become just a menace in this aquarium. He's a lot more aggressive in nature. Um, he's not tank boss yet, because some of these guys are just I don't know, more skillful or whatever. They're more experienced because he is younger. But eventually, as he gets bigger, he's definitely going to try to claim more. So I have that project behind us, a 125. I'll show you that in a different video, but I, I want him to inherit that aquarium with a female. He's a beautiful fish. He just definitely has um, potential to be super aggressive. After that, the next ranking fish would have to be this guy right here. 
This is one of six vieja, bi, no, this is vieja, yeah, by fasciatus. He's the biggest one, and he's very humble. He spends a lot of time just by himself, but this guy is quietly getting big. He's almost the same size as the black belt. He's the biggest of my vieja by fasciatus, and um, he's beautiful. He has a nice rounded head. A lot of times with that rounded head, a nuku hump is coming in, and it's more rounded than his siblings. Like I said, he's one of six, and his head is the most rounded. So he is quiet, he doesn't really cause too much problems, but he is getting bigger, and I believe he is gonna try to get higher position in this aquarium. Um, after that, I assume that the next thing, the next ranking fish is this guy right here. This is another vieja by fasciatus, and the reason why he is next in line is because he's actually trying to pair up with this female over here. Um, they're in this section of the tank. They actually claim this little right side of the tank to themselves, and just a quick tip, if you want to create separate territories in your aquarium, try to create blind spots. So we have this pair of the Aja by Fasciatus in this aquarium. They claim this territory, and this right here, this blind spot, is a divider between territories. It's harder for them to guard around this blind spot, so they just stop their territory right here. And that's pretty much how you create different territories in your aquarium. The black belt, he, he tries to make the center section his territory, so obviously we have this one right here as a territory divider, and then we have another piece of driftwood, which is creating another blind spot over there, so he doesn't really go beyond the center portion of the tank. So just a quick tip, if you wanna create multiple territories, have multiple blind spots in your tank. But yeah, this guy right here is the next ranking fish. After him, I guess we'll just toss in his female because she's with him by herself. She's smaller, so obviously she would have a lower rank, but she's working with him. And she's most likely going to try to stick to males um, just for a more guaranteed spot, of, spot in the hierarchy. So she's going to have a decent place. After that, we have a third Viha by Fasciatus male. Where is he? Um, this guy right here. I actually want to take this guy out. I don't know if him exactly, but I want to get some of these by Fasciatus out of this tank because they're never going to get over each other. Um, they're the biggest competition for each other. So having six in this tank in the long run is definitely going to have some problems. So in the long run, I just want to have maybe four of them, two pairs. But six of them, definitely a no, especially since I have four males and two females. So yeah, that right, this right here is the third ranking out of my bifasciatus. And he definitely gets it the hardest because he has two males on top of him trying to prove themselves. So he gets a lot of aggression. Um, after that, we have my fourth male. Um, I believe it's this guy right here. And of course he's on the bottom. The reason why he's on the bottom is because I was actually trying to breed him, if you remember. I had two of them in my 125 and they just weren't spawning. So I put them back in the tank and they've been outgrown by their siblings. So he's at the bottom of the hierarchy and along with him is his female, which is back there. So we have the Vieja by Fasciatus. I believe that they all stay pretty close in the hierarchy because they all look the same. So if my biggest one beats, let's say her, they all um, reap the benefits because I think she has a hard time telling who's who. So if he's more dominant than her, a lot of these other ones will be able to push her around too. Same thing with all the other fish. I believe that they have a hard time distinguishing some of these by fasciatus, so they all pretty much stick around at the same point in the hierarchy. After that, I'm gonna say we have my female dovi over here. Who would've thought a dovi could be kept in a community aquarium? The only way it's possible is if you have your females. Females are definitely not as bad. She's about maybe six to seven inches and she spends the majority of her time in her corner. She likes to eat, so she come out to eat, but she likes to spend her time in this corner or in a cave back there. The only problem she has is with her cousin, the Jaguar Dovi hybrid over here. They go back and forth. Um, they're actually right next to each other in the hierarchy. But yeah, for a Dovi, which is notorious for being one of the most aggressive fish in a hobby. She's definitely not a bad tank mate with these other guys. Um, after her, we have the female Jaguar, as I showed you, her brother, Indonymous. I'll show you him a little bit later, um, but she's in here doing her thing, not a problem. If I had to take one fish out of the tank, it would be her just because, well, besides my fest day, it would be her because um, she's kind of ugly in terms of potential color. She's, she's beautiful, but she's just not, she doesn't really fit in with the vieja. She's a predator and everything. So if I had to take one fish out besides the fish that I already plan on taking out, it would be her. 
And then it would be the dovi, just to take out fish that have different diets. Most of these vieja, they are vegetarians. So if I had to do the process of elimination, those parachromas would get out of the tank. After that, we have my pink finestratus. Beautiful fish. Um, she's a marble pattern, so I bought her and she had a regular gray body. She eventually turned white and now she has that red cap. And every now and then she gets spots so her color changes. And she's been trying to breed with my black belt. Right now the black belt um, isn't too much for her. He attacks her every now and then. But sometimes she is able to sway him and to seduce him and they do pair up. But the black belt has so many other missions and goals that he doesn't really entertain her. But if I was to separate these two, they definitely would breed and the babies would look amazing. But she's back there. And like I said, females in community aquariums are some of your best fish, some of the most well-behaved fish in a tank. After that, we have another female, a very beautiful, where is she? My Vieja Argentius, right there in the center. She's a female, so she doesn't really have too much of a high position in the hierarchy. So she spends the majority of her time just trying to stay out the way of everybody. I'm trying to focus my camera, but it's um, trying to focus on everybody else. But that's her right there. Beautiful fish, gentle giant. But yeah, she... Um, doesn't really have too much ranking, so she doesn't really do that much, but she's a beauty. And then the last fish in this aquarium is my Madagascar cichlid. This is the Starry Night cichlid. Very beautiful fish. Um, you can see she has a little gut. She loves to eat. She's one of the only fish in this tank that I can actually hand feed, just because she loves to eat. She's a beautiful fish, but I believe that she's maxed out when it comes to growth, and because of that, there is a potential that some of these guys could just bully her too much. So I do eventually want to put her upstairs in my 210 gallon aquarium. Which by the way, my 210 is just an absolute wreck. I broke so many aquarium rules. You'll see that in a future video. But I have such a mix of fish, something that I never would have done years ago. But it's working out pretty well. And eventually I would like to put her in. I can't put her in there now because um, she'll eat some of the fish in that aquarium. But eventually I do want to put her in there. She definitely is a beautiful fish. And that is all the fish in my 350 gallon aquarium. It kind of sounds crazy me talking about all these fish and their personalities, but that's one of the best parts about this tank. These fish have such huge personalities. They have such ambition. Um, it sounds crazy describing fish as ambitious, but these guys definitely are throughout the day. They're always trying to gain a higher position in a hierarchy. And it's definitely one of my most entertaining tanks. Uh, from there, we want to drop down and I have a 125 gallon aquarium. And we have Endonymous. Endonymous, as I showed you guys, his sister is up here. He's a hybrid between a Dovite and a Jaguar cichlid. And he's a cool fish. He stays down here because I wanted to develop that wet pet personality where he's just very interactive for me. And as you can see, he's super interactive. Now, I chose to put him down here just to get that behavior. But I believe, based on his character, he wouldn't be able to live in this community. He's definitely way too aggressive. Um, but yeah, definitely a beast of a fish. Right now he's about 11, going on 12 inches. A very slow growing fish, but I believe that's because he's a hybrid. I and mean, he's also pretty ugly by choice. Um, this guy, if I go and get a, a mirror, this guy has a nice golden coloration that I got unlock. Give him a little mirror for a little bit. And sometimes he shows his nice golden coloration. So he's ugly by choice but he could show a very beautiful color. He's not gonna show it, but every now and then when he wants to, he becomes a nice bright golden color, almost as bright as these peacock bass. So he has the potential to look nice. He just chooses to be ugly. Um, but that's part of the fun, having a guy that surprises you with color. And definitely a cool fish. This is a very easy aquarium to maintain. Um, I used to have a nice and decked out with plants and everything, but he destroys everything. Again, when it comes to the territories, fish hate blind spots. So I have plants and everything, he destroyed them because the fish um, doesn't want any blind spots in his territory. So if you want to create multiple territories in your aquarium, put those blind spots up and you're definitely going to create some walls of separation. But yeah, Endonymous down here, not much to say, he's still doing his thing, very responsive, and yeah, he's by himself. This video is long, so I'm going to cut it off there. Um, that's when I look at these two aquariums, still have some more tanks to show you guys. I definitely didn't plan to go with such a break. I gave you guys this tank, and I actually wanted to give you guys this video a week later, but life is just crazy when it comes to just so much other stuff that I have to do, and so little time to actually make these videos. But I thank you guys for your patience, I thank you for your comments, and just for um, being awesome. 
If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you want more, subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.